So then guys, today we're going to try and answer that question for you. Should you be thinking of upgrading your M1 Pro MacBook Pro to the likes of say an M4 Pro MacBook Pro? Is it that time now, especially that it's been now just about three years since we had the M1 MacBook Pro came out with the M1 Pro inside of it, and now we have the new M4 Pro. There's a lot of pros going on here, isn't there? But the main thing is I want to show you the difference between both of these models to see if it's actually worth upgrading between them. Now, first things first, what I would actually point out is actually in the design sort of language, probably the most obvious sort of design change is that we have the new space black color, whereas what you can see right here, this is the space gray that we had on the M1 Pro. And then something else what is different is that we can pick the nano texture screen now for the M4 Pro and also that the SDR and HDR brightness is far better than what we got with the M1 Pro. So probably those are probably the biggest sort of changes that we've got what you can actually see but everything else is happening underneath the hood of these MacBook Pros. Now what I've done to make this fair and I think this is probably the best way to do this and also probably the most popular MacBook Pros of the Pro range that are being sold is the baseline version. So what I'm talking about is that this one here is the M1 Pro baseline what came out what actually only had an 8 core CPU and a 14 core GPU inside of it. And then here with the M4 Pro what we've actually got right here this here is the 12 core CPU version and this also comes with the 18 core GPU inside of this. And it's also the same for RAM too. This has got the baseline 16 gigabytes of RAM when this came out and this has got the baseline 24 gigabytes of RAM when you buy it today if you were going to purchase it. So with that then, let's do a bit of a comparison. And first of all, let's have a look at some CPU benchmarks to see what the differences are in the matter of only three years between both these models. So as you can see here, like I said, I've got the baseline M1 Pro eight core version and you can see it's single core performance was 2,370 and then it's multi-core performance was 10,376. But look at the bottom there, that is the M4 Pro baseline version with the 12 cores inside of it, we have now got an almost a 4,000 score on the single core, 3,892, and then the multi-core on this 12 core version is 20,106, what is super impressive. And just for the fun of it, I've actually thrown in there, in the middle, the M4 CPU. So obviously this is the 10 core, and just look at that, The obviously the single core is very similar to the M4 Pro, but the multi-core score, look at that, 15,000. 1312. There is definitely a big performance game what you're seeing right here. In fact, what you can even see is that in multi-core performance, we're essentially almost getting double the amount of what the M1 Pro baseline gave us. And this is incredible to see in just three years. Now Geekbench is one type of benchmarking that we can do, but obviously there is Cinebench 2024. And again, I've done single core and multi-core kind of comparisons. Let's have a look at the chart. And you can see then, obviously, the single core performance for the M1 Pro, the 8 core, was 113, compared to the M4 Pro 12 cores, 178. But just look at that multi-core performance there, 801 to 1,578. Again, that is almost double the amount. Very similar to like what we were getting on Geekbench with the multi-core performance. So straight away, we've established that you're going to be getting around about double the amount of performance if you went from a baseline M1 Pro to a baseline M4 Pro in just multi-core performance, what is absolutely amazing. An almost 100% speed increase, what you're getting there. But then what about graphics though? What about the graphics kind of scores? What kind of differences are we getting there? Because obviously, like I said, we had 14 cores and now we have 18 cores. So let's have a look then. And first of all, we've got Geekbench 6 Metal Graphic Scores. And again, at the top there, we've got the M1 Pro with the 14 cores. What well, gives us a score 62,906, almost 63,000. And then at the bottom, we've got the M4 Pro with the 18 core, gives us 96,764. And just to show you here, guys, I stuck it in the middle here, the M4 with the 10 core GPU. There we go, it's actually less than the 14 core of the M1 Pro, but it is close. What is quite fascinating to actually 
actually see here, obviously that's got four more cores, the M1 Pro, whereas the M4 has only got 10 cores. I reckon if the M4 had say 11 cores or 12 cores, it would either just about meet, match it with the M1 Pro, or even beat it out. And that is super impressive to see there. But overall, I would actually say the M4 Pro with its 18 cores is probably giving us around about a sort of 50% increase in speed, what we're getting in graphics. And you've got to remember with the M4 Pro compared to the M1 Pro, we've got things like ray tracing and things like this built into this too, what actually helps the graphics out even further. So this is super impressive to see, but what was if we did another benchmark? Why don't we do 3D Mark and we do with that Wildlife Extreme Unlimited? So you can see here with the M1 Pro with the 14 cores, it gave us a score of 9,224, whereas the M4 Pro with the 18 core, it gave us a score of 17,236. Again, almost double the amounts that we're getting there. And this is really, really impressive to see. So I think straight away we can see that the M4 Pro is definitely faster than the M1 Pro. It's giving us really phenomenal speeds. We're getting anything from 50% to 100% or almost 100% more speed than what we got of something that existed three years ago. What is great news to see. But something that we're gonna see this year is the giveaway we're doing on this channel for this. This here is an iPhone 16 Pro Max and this here is the 256 gigabyte desert titanium or titanium desert model and I'm going to be giving this away to one lucky subscriber on this channel. And all you have to do at this stage to enter into this giveaway is just put down into the comments below of what technology that you're possibly going to buy before the end of 2024 or even into the beginning part of 2025. Maybe it's going to be a new M4 MacBook Pro or another M4 device. Maybe it's going to be a new iPhone. Maybe it's not going to be Apple related at all. Maybe it's going to be like a PS5 Pro or maybe, you know, a DJI Pro sort of drone out there or something else. Let me know in the comments below. The other thing that I just want to quickly say to you guys is obviously there will be more information about the giveaway near the end of December time around about Christmas where I'll be making a video and there will be a little form to fill in then for the giveaway too. And also I'll be announcing when I'll be doing the live stream to actually give away this iPhone 16 Pro Max. So you won't want to miss out on that. So the best thing you can do right now is subscribe to this channel and also hit that notification bell. And also you want to be a subscriber because like I said, I'm giving this away to one lucky subscriber. The other thing I just want to quickly say to you guys is sadly there are still lots of scammers and spammers out there. People still impersonating me too, sending you to WhatsApp or Telegram or Instagram, you know, direct message. Please do ignore these people. Better still can see it right here. Please do report them. So moving on then, after doing the CPU and GPU comparison, we can definitely tell that we are getting far better speeds out of an M4 Pro. And also do remember, we're getting 50% more RAM inside of this. So this is 24 gigabytes compared to the baseline 16 gigabytes, what people got back then. So that is really, really great to see that Apple are offering this now. So next of all though, what about storage? Because storage as for the baseline versions is exactly the same, it's 512 gigabytes of storage, but what are the speeds like on this? Well, let's have a look here at a Blackmagic disk speed test. So you can see here, I've got the M1 Pro with the 512 gigabytes and the M4 Pro with 512 gigabytes. And then you can see the actual speed difference. It's definitely a bump up in speed. It's not probably gonna be say 50% faster or anything like that, but you can see the M1 Pro had a fast read speed of 4,862 compared to 3,998, almost 4,000 on its write speed, whereas the M4 Pro is definitely better here. The read speed is 5,412 and the write speed is faster as well at 6,738. What is really, really impressive to see that we're getting this and that you definitely see a difference here if you are actually going to be writing to the NAND chips, the SSD, if you need that for the task that you want to do. But to be deadly honest, even the speed what's inside the M1 Pro right now, it is pretty quick and not many people are going to fully utilize even that speed right now, not alone what the speeds that are being offered inside of the M4 Pro with reading and writing. So yeah, 
it's just one thing to think about and I thought it's best to show you. But then what about if we did say a Final Cut Pro export in Hevec? Because Hevec's the most popular file that a lot of you guys export in. What's the difference if we exported a movie like this Mac Mini one that you can see right here, what's 10 minutes long, what are the speed differences in exporting this? Well, we can see that the M1 Pro exported this same Mac Mini movie in 275 seconds. What's well, really, really impressive to be honest, but the M4 Pro did the exact same file in 234 seconds. So there is definitely a difference what you're seeing right here with exporting the same kind of file. Now personally, if you're looking to just upgrade for that reason, I'd probably say for that one, I probably wouldn't bother with the media engines that are inside of these because they're very, very similar. Obviously the M4 Pro is a bit more faster, but you'd have to be really using everything else like the GPU, the CPU speeds, the disk speed to actually say it's worth doing the upgrade. If you're just doing the exports of videos and things like this, and that's really it, and just daily kind of tasks out there, I would say it's probably not maybe worth it just yet. Maybe wait out for the M5 on that. But if battery life is killing you down with the M1 Pro, well, there's good news that we've got here. Well, if you can see from this chart that Apple are actually claiming that the M1 Pro with the 8 core could actually get up to 17 hours of battery life. And obviously this was kind of watching movies, streaming it like on Apple TV app. And then the M4 Pro with the 12 core well, that can actually do up to 22 hours doing the exact same task of just watching a movie, say on Apple TV, nothing else open. And there's definitely a difference here in battery life. And this is really, really impressive to see, especially the fact that obviously the body language is exactly the same size. The batteries are exactly the same size. And really the only main difference is the chip. So even though we've got more cores, more RAM in GPU and CPU sort of cores there, that we're getting better battery life than what we got with the original M1 Pro. And that is really impressive to see in a matter of just three years. So overall then, the big question, should you be upgrading from an M1 Pro to an M4 Pro? Well, personally, I think it's down to you. But what I will say is for the first time ever, if there is the opportunity to say, and from as a reviewer out here, I would actually say now is the time, if you did want to potentially do it, then do it. But if you didn't do it, if you didn't upgrade from an M1 Pro to an M4 Pro, well, there's nothing wrong with that too. I'm just saying that there is the opportunity at last to actually think about it. You don't have to do it, but I think that obviously with the M5 Pro, maybe the M6 Pro, when that comes along, that's probably more likely the chance where I'm gonna say probably, definitely would say the M6 Pro, that if you have an M1 Pro, yeah, you should be thinking of upgrading now, because obviously, yeah, we're pushing along here. But really guys, those are my thoughts there on the M1 Pro to the M4 Pro. Are you gonna potentially be getting yourself a new M4 Pro and upgrading from an older Apple Silicon chip? Well, let me know in the comments below. And if you've enjoyed watching this video too, make sure you press the like button. Also, if you wanna hear the latest Apple news reviews and comparisons like we've done today, make sure you subscribe to this video and also hit that notification bell. Until next time guys, I'll see you really soon. Take care. Bye-bye.